fold in, fold out with different levels of variety and contrast. On the first one, I emphasize for the leads, make sure we do that prep. I'm off the track at least by count two, and I'm trying to keep the prep in line with the follow shoulder so I'm not going huge and wide on that rotation out. I'm rotating the hand down to the hip, not trying to twist the wrist, just dropping the hand to the hip so that when the follow brings it back up, she can place it wherever they want onto the lower back there. So that goes one, two, down three, and my count four is going to be about in line with the follower's head, and I'm gonna go back to my right foot for the five and six. The idea is the follower is continuing rotation, so if I don't catch that rotation, I won't get that reaction. Followers, we had a couple things for you here. So first thing is one, Two, I'm still back in the connection here so I can get the preparation. If you're too much forward, you will get lost into it. My arm gets 90 degrees in front of me when I have a rotation so I don't end up cut uh, with the other arm here. You have your rotation. Try to keep the same turnout here so your rotation comes from your standing leg instead of sending your free leg, right? So I have rotation here, three, and place the arm wherever you're comfortable in your back. Make sure it's relaxed, your wrist is relaxed. Four, we said it's going to be a pretty light connection. Your first option was to triple, and I'm still going down the track and then rotating. Second option with this, same variation. I was just thinking a little bit um, more of a bigger four, so I could do a run day step back on six. You can readjust also if you're too close from your partner. After your run day, you can step in an open four. Just make sure you collect before you redirect. Next thing we did with that. We overemphasize our forward and allow a little bit of rotation and connection to build up to accelerate to and five. So it went one, two, three, and four. And in, 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 four, and five, six. So it leads with just closing on that six. I want to make sure my body stays open on this because if I close it, I'm cutting off the amount of rotation that the follow can do, which is not a great idea for this. We don't want to say, go really fast that way. No, just kidding. Bad idea. So one more time. From this side, it goes one, two, three, and four, and five, six. Followers, if you are in a connection, you stay in a connection. If you get a release, you keep going down the track with the same direction. I have two directions here, down the track and rotation. This one, I should feel like my leader is letting me um, rotate in a little bit more, so the other one I was facing, this one, I have an eighth of a turn, maybe more rotations, we can build this connection here. I wait for him until I get the send out. Down the track again, I'm not trying to face him, your limit with the open is the uh, frame here. If you need to readjust with the feet after you can, make sure you get that last stretch at the end so you can get the resurrection. Last thing we did, we gave a little diffusion at the end after the impact. So you have normal, you have impactful, and you have impact and diffuse. So it went one, two, three, and four, five, and six. I'm letting the energy from that five send me to my and six. One more time from this way. One, two, three, and four, and five, six. Sorry, I got the mic for there. Well, always the only difference in there is that um, I have a position at the end of the pattern. When it comes towards me, I go back two centers. We can find each other in the next connection. One last thing for the leads on this when we go one, two, three, and four, and five. When we get to this part, make sure you're dancing into your own arm on this. Because I saw when we were practicing a lot of leads, we're having that happen. You were drawing the follow too. Don't do that bad juju. And that's it. Thank you very much, everybody.